Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here to recap swatching all 40 Jacquard as a dye colors all in one day. Now, these are crude swatches. I decided to use some little immersion techniques and add little bits of each dye color to three different skeins of dyer supplier yarn. This technique is crude because I didn't measure the volume of dye and so it's not the perfect way to tell the difference between color intensity of these different shades, but it was a really wonderful way for me to get a sense of the undertones or which colors might break and to get a feel of them before I go ahead and use them later on. Dyer Supplier sent me all 40 Jacquard Acid dyes for free and 40 colors is the complete set. They also sent me a bunch of yarn to play around with and test out. And the yarn that I used in this video is Dyer Supplier 8020 Fingering Weight Sock Yarn. This yarn is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and it is really, really soft and pumps up beautifully when you dye it. For this live stream, I split the colors into three groups. I did some reds and oranges, and I think, did this one have browns on it too? Yeah, reds, oranges, and browns. Next, I did greens, yellows, and, well, I guess the olive green was kind of brownish. And then finally, I did our blues, purples, black, and gray. One thing that stood out to me when playing with all of these colors was 40 colors seems like a lot, but the colors are really predominantly variations on our primaries the reds, the yellows, and the blues. And I think that this is because this will give you the best sort of base for going and doing color mixing to create all of those other shades that you want. Besides the ecru and maybe silvered gray, Jacquard doesn't carry a lot of pre-mixed pastel colors. Um, but by looking at sort of the undertone and seeing how the colors spread out, you can get a sense of what they might look like when you use them in a more dilute way. I started off with the reds, pinks, browns, and oranges. And to be honest, a lot of the reds looked really, really similar. Uh, the one real standout it was that the fire red felt a bit cooler and cherry, felt a little bit warmer. Um, certainly pink is less electric than the bright fuchsia, but overall I think that from experience later on and maybe playing more with the depth of shade and looking at these colors with a more formulaic approach, it might help to get a better sense of these different reds. I do think that this was much more useful when looking at the oranges and the browns. For example, brown is a lot warmer than chestnut. And so seeing these things side by side is really helpful if I want to pull a color and play with it in the future. Acru is very, very unpigmented, which is to be expected because it is really a pastel. But still, I was expecting a tiny bit more of an impression with the concentrated powder. Next up, I pulled the yellows and greens. There was an orange that did get left behind on the first set. I do appreciate that the Jacquard bottles have a color strip on them that help you uh, get a sense of what color is inside. The real surprise for this on this skein of yarn was the olive green. This color breaks. There's a deeper color that I don't really have a good sense of, but maybe it's like some kind of green that struck really fast. And before I could kind of help the color spread a little bit, you see these sort of warm, different shades of brown even from that single color. I placed olive in with the greens because I thought it was gonna be an olive green color. But if you look at sort of a catalog of Jacquard acid dyes, it does seem to be more brown, which is then consistent with the color we saw on the yarn. Finally, I looked at the blues, purples, and blacks, which, as you know, are my absolute favorite colors. Here, the main things that stuck out is that sky blue is much less pigmented than the other more primary blues. 
I'm not sure why I initially picked sky blue as the first blue I bought from Jacquard Acid Dyes, but this really shows why I struggled a little bit more um, because it is just overall a less intense color than the other blues that we see in the collection. And so if you look back at my first hand painted yarn, the yellow vastly overwhelmed my sky blue. Other standouts were some breaking potential. Periwinkle breaks, and I saw that immediately, and it also looks like the color purple might break. I, on the yarn, um, finished yarn, you can't see as clearly because things are random and things have been covered and moved around, but I definitely feel the breaking when using it. And the irony here is that those are two purples I haven't played with before. I played with violet and tried breaking violet, and that didn't break. So maybe I picked the wrong purple and I'm gonna have to play around with these colors more in the future. Well, I'm gonna have to play around with all the colors anyway, but maybe I need to do a dip dyeing test with some Jacquard acid dyes to see which ones break. I think that this set of three skeins goes together so beautifully. The one thing that I will point out is that these colors are definitely not repeating. There's likely some asymmetry to them. In my previous color swatching videos, after I got an initial sense of the colors, then I would go through and layer on the colors on top to create a beautiful layered, intense, vibrant colorway. I love that technique, but I wanted to keep these a little more pure, if that makes sense. I didn't want to layer it all over because Honestly, so you can do something really fun with a colorway that might shift from one end to the other. So if you're going to use these for socks, they would probably end up being sibling socks, related, not identical. But if you're going to use this in like a cowl or a shawl, there might be some really interesting progressions or not. Um, but either way, I think they're beautiful colorways and would be really, really fun to knit or crochet with. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I would like to give another huge thank you to Dyer Supplier for sending me the yarn and the dyes to play around with. I am really excited to explore all of this more in the future. I am a Dyer Supplier affiliate, and if you want to learn more about the yarn basis, you can find my affiliate link in the video description. And if you're disappointed that I didn't look at all of these colors on one skein of yarn, Hang tight, because I did. As I was opening up all the jars, there's a lid with a seal on them. And I decided to leave no dye behind and I used those lids and put them on a damp skein of yarn. So soon, in the next video, you can watch me dye this yarn using all 40 colors from the Jacquard Acid Dye Collection. If you missed this live stream and you're bummed, don't worry, the replay is available. You can go back and watch it, but make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications so that way you don't miss the next time I do an impromptu live stream. Stay tuned because the 2019 Summer Mini Skiing Mini Series is coming up starting on July 22nd. There are still some samplers available in the Cabinets Creations Etsy shop. And in these, you can unwrap a package every night as you're watching one of these awesome bonus videos featuring mini skeins and really experience the videos on a different level because you can feel the yarn, swatch the yarn as you watch me dye it. And unlike most of the time when there's only one skein that could go to one person, this time more of you can touch the yarn from some of the videos. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. You can find a link to the sampler listing in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching everyone.